everybody. In today's episode of my gluten-free Disney kitchen, we are about to make some side accompaniments with the gluten-free vegan naan that I made in a recent video of my gluten-free Disney kitchen. So that naan bread comes from Sanaa, which is one of my favorite restaurants at Disney, and I absolutely love their gluten-free and allergy-friendly bread service that comes again with that gluten-free and vegan naan, which is made with cup for cup, and it's super awesome and delicious. But then the, the best part is all the different dipping sauces that come with the bread service. And today we're going to make one of those dipping sauces, which is my one of my favorites, the mango chutney. So because a lot of it's going to be cooked on the stovetop and for a long amount of time, we're actually going to do sort of a two-parter video where you're going to see bits and pieces of this being made. So the first thing we need is we need a saucepan. Um, of course, there was a lot of dicing of vegetables and fruit before this video, and I'm sorry I didn't cut up a lot of this beforehand, but because we're going to be cooking a lot of this on the stovetop, I decided to save a little bit of time just dicing some onion and the mangoes ahead of time. But easy to do. It's also easy if you get a lot of different things prepped. Um, so if you don't really have a lot of time, you can get a lot of pre-chopped onions and even fruit at the store, which will help save some time when you're making this. So the first thing that we need, again, is our saucepan. Now the recipe that I got from Disney actually recommends a stainless steel pan, and I'm assuming that's because of the acid in it and because it's going to be cooking at uh, sort of a high rolling boil for a little bit. We're going to work with what we have here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some brown sugar. It's about a cup and a half of brown sugar to this pan. I use just regular light brown sugar. Um, and then we're going to add some other bits. And then we're going to boil this on the stove top and let it cook and gel and turn into this awesome, awesome chutney. And then we're also going to add some fun things to it like curry powder and cumin. That'll just give it a big punch. And it's going to be amazing with our gluten-free and vegan naan bread later down the road. So then next we're going to add in some onion. You gotta love my fancy container here. Um, you can tell I love so delicious. So just some diced onion. You want to do one onion. You can do a medium or large depending on how much mango you have and how much onion you like in it. But I'm following the directions this time. I like to be a rule follower most of the time when it comes to directions on recipes, but Every once in a while I like to divert, which I'm going to do a little bit today, and I'll explain why. So we're just going to go ahead and put that in. There we go. More in the pot. Next, we're going to take some diced red pepper, and it does really need to be red pepper. I like red pepper in it because it adds just a bit of sweetness, and so that's going to mix really well with the brown sugar and the mango and all the different spices in here. So it calls for one red pepper. I diced that up again. If you went to the store, you could get this pre-diced if you wanted to. So I'm just going to pop that in the pot. Oop. Easy peasy. Again, getting all the little extra bits out because I love all that. Then we're going to add in our mango. Holy mango! So mango is one of my favorite fruits, which is probably one of the reasons I love this mango chutney so, so much. Um, it calls for three mangoes. You can use sort of whichever kinds of mangoes you'd like. I have no idea, but there's like a hundred and plus varieties of mango. Um, but we'll get, a, get whatever your store has. Um, again, I've got three mangoes in here. I tried to get fairly sizable mangoes, but I'm, I'm thinking I don't have enough mango for all this stuff. So we're going to see how it works out. So again, I just went ahead and diced this. If dicing up mango is not your thing, you can get it done in the store. A lot of times you can get like chunks of mango, which would be easier to chop up. Mango is a lot like stone fruit in that it's kind of a pain sometimes to cut up, but we're going to put all this in the pool. Holy moly, I can already see the chutney starting. Look at all this goodness. It's going to be great. Next, we're going to add in some ginger. Now, it calls for a quarter of a cup. That seems like a lot of ginger to me. I like ginger, but that seems like a lot. So I'm actually doing about an eighth of a cup of ginger in there just because that to me seemed like a whole lot of ginger. Again, if you like ginger and you want to follow sort of the regular recipe, totally cool. I'm just going to make mine a little less gingery. And then the last thing I need is a half a cup of white vinegar. 
All right, here's where I'm diverting besides the slight variation of ginger. So apparently I didn't have white vinegar in my kitchen, which is very strange. Usually I have all sorts of stuff like that. I have apple cider vinegar, so I'm swapping out the apple cider vinegar for the white vinegar because that's what I have on hand. Now, usually you can swap these out pretty easily, but one of the things that I will say is that apple cider vinegar is a little sweeter. So that may be one of the reasons that they asked for white vinegar, which is a little bit more pungent than the apple cider vinegar. So we're going to see how it turns out. So there we go. We've got all the kids in the pot right now. We're going to go ahead and put this on the stove top and we're going to bring this to a boil. I'm going to take you guys through that process and then we're going to cook it for about 20 minutes and then we're going to add in some spices making it even more awesome. So stay tuned with the magic of YouTube as we go ahead and cook our mango chutney. Okay, boiling has been achieved. So once your mixture boils, you want to turn down the heat and then you're going to cook it at a light boil for about 20 minutes. So holy moly, we have lots of boilage. So we're going to turn this down and then let it cook for 20 minutes. Okay, so now you can see we've cooked this down for about 25 minutes. The recipe calls for 20. I went an extra five just so I could make this nice and syrupy and a lot thicker. You can see as we move it up here that it has gotten a lot more thick. So the sugar, everything's sort of broken down. Now we're going to add in just a few of the last ingredients. Then we're going to cook it again for about another five minutes or so. The first is just some lemon juice, about a tablespoon. I'm going to use just a whole uh, lemon juice. Go ahead and stir that in there. And then we're going to put in some spices. So I have a blend here. The first is a half a teaspoon of uh, dried ground cumin, which is one of my favorite spices. Huge, huge fan. Then also a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. That's an interesting one. And then the last is two teaspoons of curry powder. And it calls for madras curry powder, which is a little bit spicier. Um, I didn't actually have madras curry on hand. I had a couple of different curries. Um, you could look for some basic garam masala. I have just a basic curry powder, and then I also had a butter chicken uh, curry powder, which had a lot more of the ingredients that are in the madras curry powder. So I ended up using a teaspoon of each of these, so we're gonna see how that goes. So we'll put those into the pond here. Make sure everything comes out little last bits of those spices oh wow I wish you guys could smell in here because it smells amazing especially adding in all of those spices the curry smell just fantastic so we're gonna go ahead like I said we're gonna cook this again sort of at a light boil I'm just gonna turn up the heat just a little bit for about another five minutes and then when that's done we'll take a look we're gonna then refrigerate it and then after that, we will have some amazing uh, mango chutney. Okay, so our mango chutney is now done. I refrigerated it for a few hours. Really to get the best results, I recommend you refrigerate it and serve it probably the next day. And that's just so the flavors can meld together, get nice and amazing and delicious. But here is what my mango chutney looks like. How awesome is that? Now I will say it looks a little bit darker than the version that I get at Sanan. I'm wondering if that's a combination of the kind of vinegar and sort of the different kind of curry that I used. Again, I used a combination of curry powders as opposed to the Madras curry. So that might affect the color a little bit. I'll also be curious to see what it looks like the next day. I also think I probably could have added about one more mango. I think mine were just a little bit small. So that's something to think about too. But look at how delicious this is. And because I have chutney and it goes with Sanaa bread service, I had to have bread service. So look at this, even on a board. Fancy fancy. So I made a couple of mini pieces of vegan naan and I've got my chutney. Of course, I love having a variety of dips and so I cannot wait to do sort of an all out total uh, Sana bread service kind of experience. But let's go ahead and give it a whirl. I'm actually gonna take just a piece of manan bread and I'm gonna top it. I have not tried this yet. So this will be a first time try for my homemade mango chutney very excited. Going to give it a big old scoop there. Mm. 
that was a huge bite. It's quite delicious. I will say, I think flavor combinations, it's pretty spot on. I think a few things I might tweak in the future. I think I put a little too much red pepper for my taste. Um, I think it would be a little bit too much. And my cat is up here joining me. That's a new one. He has not jumped up here before. Buddy, the stove is hot, bud. He's very curious about this mango chutney. So that should tell you how good it is when the cat wants to come check it out. But this is really delicious. I think overall a great recipe, a great experiment, killer bread service. So for my gluten-free Disney kitchen and my Sana bread service, thanks again for joining me for this episode. Stay tuned for more episodes here. Of course, subscribe if you love these. Tell me what you'd like to make at home. Tell me if you have ideas for things you'd love to see recreated. And if you make this mango chutney yourself, tweet me at gfdf underscore wdw. Let me know. Show me photos. I've seen some awesome photos so far or some of your recreations of the recipes I've shared here on my gluten-free Disney kitchen. And I cannot wait to see more. So for my gluten-free Disney kitchen and all over my cat, thanks again for joining us and we'll see you real soon.